religious things, doing things because we think we ought to do them or that we should do them in our own ability and strength. And we often read in the scriptures about the Holy Spirit, but maybe don't completely comprehend who he is, what he does, or how he operates in the life of the believer. How he gives the abilities to be a witness, or to be a martyr, or to be a missionary, or to be a pastor, a teacher, an elder, a deacon. To be someone involved in ministry. Perhaps there's even some misconceptions about what the Holy Spirit is, or who he is, because of things that have been seen on television, or that people have said or done that have driven a wedge between you and the Holy Spirit. The fact of the matter is, is that God, His Spirit, is the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. That's what He is. That's who He is. We don't understand completely and comprehend fully all that God's Spirit is, but we do know that God is a Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And that Spirit that we worship Him in is the Holy Spirit. We ask Him to come into our lives. We ask Him to fill us. We ask Him to baptize us and to give us gifts of the Spirit and to enable us to have fruit in our life, to have the peace that passes all understanding, to have the love that is incomprehensible and unconditional that can love anyone, including their enemies, to have that joy that in the midst of any type of tribulation and consternation, that we can still enjoy and rejoice in the fact that we know God and are in walking with fellowship with Him. So, without the Holy Spirit, you really can't do what a Christian is called to do. You can learn up to a religious point, and it can bring you to a good foundation, a structure or a stepping platform where you can maybe ascend to a higher level if you ask God to lead you, if you ask God to give you His Holy Spirit. Because at this time and age that we live in, we were told that when He comes, the Comforter, who was sent by God to comfort us in this age that we live in because there would be so many things that would be coming against us that He would lead us into truth. You can't know truth without the Holy Spirit. You can know religious ideas and you can have an affirmation towards the truth but you will not actually know truth as far as Jesus is concerned unless you have the Holy Spirit within you because He is the one who illuminates or reveals Jesus to us. We can't see Jesus, we can't hear Jesus, and we don't know Jesus without the aid of the Holy Spirit. Now having said that, we should not fear Him because He's gentle and meek, and He's tender in such a way that, no, what you see as far as slapping people down and knocking them around and acting as though it were some kind of fire or some kind of power force is wrong. It's totally contrary to what the Bible teaches. God is not like that. God has never asserted himself in such a way that he totally goes against what you already know as far as being God is love and personifying him as such. In other words, yes, in the Old Testament, God at different times manifested himself through the power that he was able to demonstrate, and he will do that again in the tri tribulation period when he reveals his wrath, but he stores that up to a certain period of time that you have to cause that to happen, that you are given grace and mercy, you are given a certain portion of time with which you can change your way to repent, to turn to a different direction, to do something different than to receive judgment for those actions with which you have done. And God has always been merciful in that way. His loving kindness endures forever. All of Israel can say to the nations, His, endure, His love endures forever. His loving kindness never ends. So, in respect to that, we know that God gives us the ability to be His witness through the Holy Spirit. Because while the Father dealt with the children of Israel in the Old Testament, Jesus dealt with those that were in life and living in the world through the New Testament at the time that he was walking on the earth and he shall still reign in the kingdom to come for a thousand years yet now is the age that the Spirit of God moves in the hearts and minds of men that we are not overflowing with it but that we are meant to have the Spirit deposited in us as an earnest for the redemption of our souls that one day we would be taken to heaven to God himself by way of that spirit being 
caught up into the heavens. The Spirit is what leads us or will lift us up to Jesus himself because the Spirit is within us. Without that Spirit within you, you won't be raptured. Bluntly, you won't be. There's absolutely no way you will be raptured without the Spirit of God in you. Without the Holy Spirit doing it, when the Spirit is gone, when the, he that restrains is, when the restrainer is left and no longer restrains that evil with which is be manifest in the world, and the Satan then reveals the false Messiah and the Antichrist and the false prophet and the false world religion that is going to come upon the world, then and only then, you know, will there be no spirit, so to speak, in the world, and evil will flourish to such a degree that the light will have gone out of the world. Literally, men will live and die by their own efforts in some ways. And so, now while we have this age of grace that we live in and the mercy with which God has extended to us His Spirit and allowed that nature of God to be within us, then we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places, and we do not fight a warfare that is of the physical realm with which people try to get guns and ammunition and try to build up their own armaments and try to do all these ridiculous things that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. No sword is going to protect you, but the Spirit of God will. No army is going to keep you safe, but God shall, by His own Spirit, do so according to His will and not according to yours. So, in Tozer, we always have to examine ourselves to see if we are doing all that we possibly could in order to find that place that God wants us to be so that we would walk in the Spirit as not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. For if we walk in the way through the world, we will fulfill the lust of the flesh and we will fail. And the Spirit of God will not always wrestle with flesh and blood, but will one day yield to our self-will and sadly leave us behind. The new man in Christ is a perpetual miracle. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8.14 The man of God, the true Spirit-filled man of God, is a perpetual miracle. He has come to his knowledge of God by the wonder of the new birth and the illumination of the Spirit. Therefore his life is completely different from the world around him. There is nothing the same. Consider with me the words of 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. In other words, it's... God's Spirit that teaches us. It is not some pastor, some elder, some deacon, some prince, some king, some whatever, some word from the Bible, but it's the Spirit of God that teaches us. It is the Spirit of God that leads us. It's the Spirit of God that guides us. It's the Spirit of God that makes it applicable to our lives. John was a teacher and he says that your knowledge of God is not taught from without. It is received by an inter- or inner anointing. What are we doing, or what are we going to do with this truth? Are we going to open the door of our personality and fling it wide open to be taught of God? Let us not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He is an illuminator. He is light to the inner heart. He will show us more of God in a moment than we can learn in a lifetime without Him. He will not throw out what we have learned if it is the truth. He will set it on fire, that's all. He will add fire to the altar. The blessed Holy Spirit waits to be honored. He will honor Jesus as we honor Jesus. He waits, and if we will throw open our hearts to him, a new sun will rise on us, and I know this by personal experience of my own life and ministry. You know, I read about, I think it's called Passing Closer to the Flame by, uh, I think it's Chuck Swindoll. And for the longest time, he taught against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He taught that, no, there is no gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's no fruit of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit doesn't operate in the life of the believer until it happened to him. And then all of a sudden, he wrote a book and apologized to all the people that he'd been teaching, but at the same time, he had to pursue that knowledge that God had given him by way of the Holy Spirit. The same is true with you. If you have not discovered that 
God has given you His Spirit and that you need but only ask for Him to fill you with His Spirit, then you need to study and to apply yourself to the Word of God so that the power of God would come into your life so you would stop doing what you're doing. You would cease from sin and lusts of the flesh. Not completely, but you would have an ability to make wise choices that do not involve seeking self-will and selfishness and acts of the flesh, but would seek His will and fruits of the Spirit, that they would be manifested in your life so that you would begin to reveal Jesus as you go forward in life. Because without the Spirit of God doing that in you, you'll never know Jesus in a personal, intimate way that God intended for you to know unless the Spirit of God revealed Him to you.